are more than 100 unique styles of beer, each with their own set of ingredients, process, guidelines, history, and experience. If you're a beer lover, an industry leader, or somewhere in between, a better knowledge of beer style will improve your life and your work. Welcome to A Sense of Beer Style, essential beer style training for those who want to lead in food and beverage. I'm Julia Herz. And I'm Jeremy Storden. We're advanced Cicerones, beer judges, home brewers, and we're excited to guide you through the vast and wonderful world of beer styles. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Julie and Jeremy's show that you are a part of Two Cents of Beer Style. Today, we are in the IPA category of, of multiple IPAs, many fine sir and and ladies and um, everyone. And specialty IPA is uh, the kind of subcategory. And within specialty IPA, we're talking about today Belgian IPA. Now, this is a style, Jeremy, that is really known to just basically be a hoppy, bitter beer, right? I mean, specialty fits with that, but there's a little bit more with that because the essence of experimental IPA is, is that you had um, American IPA, West Coast IPA, before that English IPA, and then you've got craft brewers and, and, and home brewers and the like just experimenting. So they take Belgian yeast and they add it to a traditional IPA. Or you have Belgian brewers like um, Erthel, who makes Hop It, Hop To It, and they are out of Belgium. They're one of the first Belgian breweries that went out of tradition, went out of their lane, and started experimenting with hops in a brand new way. And they're actually one of the classic styles um, for Belgian IPA. So I think it's really worth a style, um, or worth, worth a taste for the style. More than that, just having them in your fridge. And big picture, just remember, they're hoppy bitter beers with essence from Belgian yeast and we've we've got experimentation at the forefront because of this style. Jeremy, what ingredients will um, people use to brew these types of beers? Yeah, so when when we put the the beer into perspective, the ingredients just kind of make sense. but um, imagine you have this American with a great big personality. Uh, and goes over to Belgium and meets a, a, a Belgian with a big personality, and they have a mad love affair. And their love child is what this beer is. Uh, so, so uh, we're, you know, we're going to start with a pale uh, two row malt base. Um, and, and if this is more of an American style uh, kind of American base IPA, we're going to start looking at American or New World hops. So we're talking uh, tropical fruits, uh, forest, uh, citrus, you know, uh, all type of flavors like that. If this has a little bit more of a Belgian influence, then, you know, the Belgians do grow hops, but they're typically more of the, uh, British or the, uh, uh, German style hops. So it'll be a little bit more herbal, a little bit more spicy, a little bit more garden, uh, a little bit flower, maybe some red berry in there. Uh, but what really makes this stand out is we have this IPA with this beautiful Belgian yeast strain. Uh, it, so, uh, you know, like I said, imagine American IPA and I said a Belgian, but imagine a Belgian triple or a Belgian golden strong having a love child. And so that we're using yeast that really manifests like a triple or a golden strong ale. So that's the type of yeast they're going to use uh, for this beer as well. So that, uh, you know, that's the character of the beer. Those are the ingredients of the beer and it just makes sense. Yes, it does. And so you're going to start looking at it once you pour it into your glass. Appearance will really uh, madden you. So much of the style guidelines do. It's okay. Take the elephant out of the closet and let's talk about it. Good to quite hazy clarity is what the um, the style guidelines say. Wow. That's kind of wild. So it's okay to have um, it be hazy, right? And then um, light golden to amber in color, the, the vital statistics when we talk about those will reflect that. And then off-white collar of foam with good head retention, and that's classic for certainly other basic IPAs, um, not just this specialty one. So pretty straightforward, no surprises there in how the appearance for a Belgian IPA is described. What about the aroma? So the aroma, granted, keeping this character in mind, this you know the strong-willed American and the just big character Belgian, we're gonna we're gonna have this base note of this low grainy malt, maybe some honey, maybe a little bit of caramel if it's a little bit on the darker side, but it's just it's got this beautiful foundation that's gonna hold everything together. Then we have these these hops. If it's more of American base, we're looking at a medium to high. We're, Keep in mind, we're talking about an IPA still, so it's a medium to high hop character. 
tropical fruit, stone fruit, uh, berries, uh, pine, citrus, uh, that sort of stuff. If it's more of a Belgian character, it's going to be a little bit more of European hops, more earthy, more herbal, more floral type of thing. Uh, but the yeast is really what gives it that character. So we have these hops, you have this hop character, but you can have this medium high esters of banana, of pears, of apples, of, of different spice, clove, uh, black pepper, white pepper. Uh, and that's what just really gives this an incredible personality of a beer. Um, you can have no alcohol at all in the aroma, or it can have just a little low spicy pop. It kind of depends on the ABV, and we'll talk about that later. But that's the aroma I'm looking for at an at average example of a Belgian IPA. Uh, how about the flavor? How does that translate? Well, everything you just said, Jeremy, tips its hand towards the flavor. So very well described. And and you hear what Jeremy's saying to you and us and then what I'm going to share with you for flavor. And you can't help but not want to try this, right? Very <laughs> enticing descriptors go on in the style guidelines and from what our perception and descriptions are. Moderate, fruity, and spicy flavors, right? I love fruit. I love spice. Let's try it. All right. And that Belgian yeast that Jeremy talks about is not just going to influence the beer's aroma, but it really is going to carry over into the taste. And that's different than a regular IPA or a standard IPA with American or English ale yeast. So that Belgian ale yeast and some phenol, some vanilla, some clove, um, right? It's going mm -hmm. to give us some really essence, some pears. It's going to give us some good flavor as well. This is a beer because it's an IPA, so moderately to highly hop flavor. Um, and then, you know, moderate to high bitterness. So just know that it's very hop influenced. Um, the, the malt is your classic pale malts as Jeremy kind of, uh, overviewed and, you know, um, so those grainy malt, pale malt flavors are going to showcase, but it's more about the yeast as any Belgian beer mostly is showcasing yeast flavors first, and then also hops. And then the malt somewhat more of a backdrop here, maybe some honey, maybe some toast, a little bit more, um, in the background. And then the, um, dry to medium dry finish gets me excited because I love that uh, a Belgian yeast will dry this out. Right? I think I think Belgian yeasts are very well attenuative um, workhorses. Attenuative meaning they eat more sugars and they leave you less residual sugar because they've given you um, the alcohol from the sugar that they've eaten and then strong, robust carbonation from that. Um, so I just love the fact that that's got that medium um, dry to dry finish and and the and the flavor is very inviting. Like hopefully everything I just described has you has you wanting to brew this or, or, or seek it out. Yeah. And, and you, you're talking about a really important aspect of this character. This is an IPA, but it has a lot of Belgian character. And, and I'm so sorry I don't have an example in front of me right now. But when I've had some in the past, you know, we're talking about Belgian yeast. You, you mentioned their workhorses and they are. They attenuate, uh, they, they dry out the beer. They give it a lot of carbonation uh, and they give it a really clean, dry finish as well. That makes me want to take another sip. That makes me want to add food to this rather than just having a beer and then we'll go figure out dinner later on. This is for the whole experience. And so that when, when we start talking about mouthfeel, all of that makes sense within the context of, remember, we're talking Belgian yeast. So we're going to have a low to a medium body because Belgian beers tend to be lower in body because they attenuate well. Uh, it's going to be a medium to high carbonation because the lower that they attenuate and the more that the sugar they eat, the more carbonation they create. Uh, and it's going to create a little bit more alcohol when they attenuate down too. So we can have a little bit of uh, uh, alcohol warming and that is perfectly okay and kind of expected if I'm going to be honest. But uh, but this is what we're looking for in the mouthfeel, and it all kind of fits together like a like a puzzle with the aroma, the flavor, the mouthfeel, and the experience of an IPA with the Belgian yeast. Uh, so that is the mouthfeel. Let's talk about the style comparison. And in style comparison, again to ground you and us, we're talking about specialty IPA and the Belgian IPA within the IPA category of the beer judge certification program guidelines. So you're going to have some comparison with what's in the specialty IPA or IPA category. Um, the easy quick hit is, you know, it's a spicier because of that Belgian yeast, um, stronger, drier, as we talked about, maybe fruitier because of the yeast too than an American IPA, right? But you have Jeremy earlier in the style class talking about love children for sure. And so, you know, <laughs> take an American IPA if you're more used to drinking that and or a double IPA, go to triple, go crazy, and then get yourself a Belgian Golden Strong, which is a little drier um, than a Belgian Triple or a Belgian Triple. And you take the Belgian Golden Strong and the Belgian Triple, two very brother-sister, very similar styles, and then 
put it with an American or a double IPA, two brother sister very similar styles, and then you birth the specialty um, Belgian IPA. That's that's the easy easy quick hit. Yeah, uh, when we're talking about uh, commercial examples now. I'm, I'm going to be honest, these are a little bit of a unicorn. Uh, they're kind of hard to find. Uh, and unless you can find one, you can always brew one. Or uh, you made me think about you know, if you get an American IPA and a Belgian Golden Strong or a Triple, uh, drink half of each and then blend them together. That might give you a, a sense of, of uh, what we're talking about if you can't find one. Um, so that, that's my little PSA is, you know, if, if you can't find one, just make your own and you'll get an idea. But um, the commercial examples that are listed in the BJCP, uh, they're they're hard to find. But if you can find them, grab them. But uh, Green Flash, the uh, the brewery from San Diego with uh, a, a crazy uh, history, uh, their uh, Le Freak is a fantastic, incredible beer. Uh, if they still have it, if they still make it, uh, it's incredible. And if they don't, then write them and say we want Le Freak back. Uh, Earthel Hop, it. Uh, I haven't had it, but Julia, you were uh, speaking volumes about this before we started. Uh, the brewery Vivant uh, Triomphe uh, is another example, and the uh, classic. Uh, from Belgium, the Hublon Schuf, uh, anything Schuf makes, I want to drink. And so if you can find that, grab it. And and those are, would be the commercial examples. But again, if you can't find them, make it yourself. And that's, that's a quick way to DIY it. Uh, uh, let's see. We, I think we need to talk about vital stats next. Sure. So any beer style study will take you to the vital statistics if you're trying to master them for either testing or beer surface, brewing or personal enjoyment. Um, so Belgian IPA has original gravity of 1058 to 1080, um, final gravity of 1008 to 1016. There's a lot of eights there, right? So maybe easier to memorize there. 1008 to 1016, though, is a big range. 1008 is actually drier. 1016 definitely has some residual sugar. So to pay attention to on that one. And then alcohol by volume is 6.2 to 9.5%. That's definitely tipping the scales to higher alcohol than the comparison style of American IPA. So all the way up to 9.5% got some definite girth in these examples. Uh, international bitterness units, again, a very strong range, but one easy to remember. 50 bitterness units, and I always think about 50 as the cutoff, really more discerning bitterness starting at 50 bitterness units, less discerning, less than 50, and then go up from there. So it's 50 to 100. Wow. A hundred's way above perceptible levels. <laughs> what a broad range. You just double 50 to get to a hundred. So there's your Belgian IPA international bitterness un units range is 50 to a hundred. And then standard reference method or SRM and color is five to eight. That's basically gold to light amber, right? And Jeremy is better on the word mm -hmm. naming convention when we get to the SRM numbers, but not a lot of color there. That's not the big emphasis. So it is paler in color for sure. Um, Jeremy, anything to yeah. add? I did not do my conversions today, but you can. No, that's okay. I, I got your back on that. Yeah. Uh, eight, we're just starting to look at amber. We're starting to like consider the possibility. But if you're an EBC person, your uh, European Brewery Convention, we're looking at effectively double the SRM. We've got 10 to 16. Uh, you mentioned original gravity. If we're talking original Play-Doh, we're looking at 14 and a half to 20. So it, it's it's got some potential there. Uh, and then finishing Play-Doh, uh, two to four. Um, and, and for those who don't uh, don't think about ABV. They think about uh, total Play-Doh. The twelve and a half to sixteen is is what will bring us there. Um, but I'm going to uh, bring us back over to uh, glassware af after that. Uh, you know, frankly, this is a, a Belgian beer uh, with an IPA. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of foam. There's a lot of aroma. There's a lot of uh, flavor. Please do not put this in a shaker pint and do not put this in a frosted glass of any kind. This needs a proper glass that can really um, show off that color, show off that uh, the, the foam, show off everything uh, that this beer has to offer. The type of glass I'm looking for at the very least would be a Nonic pint, um, uh, maybe a Willie Becker. But really, my favorite glass for this type of beer would be a really nice tulip pint or a stemmed tulip glass. That would be perfect uh, for uh, this this beer. Uh, temperature wise, you know, I, I'm looking at uh, low 40s on a warm day and mid 40s on a cool day, uh, and that would translate to uh, five or six Celsius to uh, seven or eight Celsius. Uh, this is really the sweet spot for this type of beer. Speaking of this type of beer and the sweet spot, 
what what food would you have with this? So take all the flavor descriptors that we've just shared with you verbally and or while you're sipping and creating your own lexicon and how to describe it. Um, and I am eliciting candied pears, right? Or um, mm. goat cheese drizzled with honey. I want something that's going towards funk but not funky because the Belgian yeast used for this really isn't wild yeast. It's more about phenols and esters. Um, but I want something that's uh, – it's taking me not to the um, – it's to the sweet side, not necessarily to the savory side. Uh, savory could be good. I mean, this is a style where uh, you've got those base notes of, 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 um, of hops and malt that can stand up to many entrees. But I, I mean, I'm going for dessert on this one and I'm, I'm standing with what I just shared. Yeah. And, and for me, uh, you know, I, I love all of it, but you know, really when I think about those dominant flavor profiles and what my instincts are telling me is, you know, roasted vegetables over, over open fire, grilled fire would just be amazing. But you know, you know me. I, I love pizza and and and, and IPAs. The, that's a perfect pairing. But this is a different kind of IPA. So I need a different kind of pizza. I want a white pizza with with a candied uh, pecans and rosemary potatoes and uh, and and a little bit of a truffle oil drizzled over the top. And that would just make this beer and the entire experience just absolutely sing at the top of its lungs. Nice, you got me there. I love it. I want that pizza yeah. right now. Right. Anyway, uh, that is th this a very hard to find but very special beer style, the Belgian IPA. Uh, it's it's something to behold. It's something to experience, and I ho hope you all find it. It's it's incredible. Enjoy. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Essence of Beer Style, the essential beer style training for those who want to lead in food and beverage. With advanced Cicerones, me, Julia, and me, Jeremy. Tune into the next episode as we continue exploring the world of beer styles and what to make of them. We encourage you to listen to the prepisodes to build your foundation and better understand beer styles. And before the next episode, I'd like to ask you to review the show and let us know what you'd like featured in upcoming episodes. Until next time, here's to you and your sense of beer style. Thank you for listening. Cheers. Cheers.